The earth where we live in is astonishingly beautiful. We have vast extensive mountains and hills, some of which are also snow capped. We also find beautiful beaches, valleys and vast extensive green plains. But you will be surprised to know that the earth's interior is very different from its appearance at the surface. But how do we get to know about the interior of the earth? We can get some idea about the earth's interior from economic activities like mining and oil drilling. These economic activities are direct evidences about the earth's interior. Now, the deepest gold mine that was ever dug is Impone Gold Mine and it is located in South Africa. The depth of this gold mine is 3.9 km. Again, the deepest oil well that was dug is 12 km deep. The name of this oil well is Z44 Shavo. It is located in Russia. But let me tell you that the gold mine and oil well were dug to extract minerals like gold and oil respectively and not to study about the earth's interior. So have we done anything exclusively to study about the earth's interior? Yes, we have done ocean drilling. The most significant ocean drilling that was ever done is the bore that was dug at Kola in the Arctic Ocean. This is the deepest bore that was ever dug and the depth of this bore is 13 km. So this bore was dug exclusively to study about the interior of the earth. So, in the previous slide, we saw that the board that was dug to study about the Earth's interior is 13 km deep. And the depth of this board is too insignificant compared to the Earth's radius. And the Earth's radius is 6400 km. So, you see that the Earth's radius is 6400 km long, but we have traveled only 13 km deep, and it is impossible to travel further beyond this point. So, you can see that the depth of this board is too insignificant. So, we do not have any concrete direct evidence that tells us about the Earth's interior. And therefore, we have to rely on some indirect sources. Now, what are indirect sources? The indirect sources are the evidences that have been derived from extensive research and analysis. And this indirect sources provides us good information about the Earth's interior. Some of these indirect sources are temperature, density, pressure, and behavior of seismic waves. We shall study about each of these indirect sources in details in this video further. Can you name this chocolate? Yes, it is Ferrero Rocher. This chocolate is not only amazing to taste, but also has an intriguing concept. The outer layer of this chocolate is hardened chocolate with pieces of nuts. The middle layer of this chocolate is melted hazelnut and the inner or the center part of this chocolate is a solid hazelnut. So just like this chocolate has three distinct layers, do you know that the earth's interior also has a similar structure? As I have mentioned just now, the earth's interior is quite similar to the structure of this chocolate. So just like this chocolate, the earth's interior also has three distinct layers. That is the crust which is quite similar to the hard outer covering of this chocolate with pieces of nuts. The middle layer is mantle and it is again similar to the melted hazelnut. Now just as this chocolate has a solid inner part, the earth's interior is also solid and it is called core. So the earth has three distinct layers, crust, mantle and core. 
Now I have mentioned that we get to know about this interior structure of the earth from some indirect sources. Now let us study about those indirect sources one by one in details. The first indirect source of information is temperature and we get to know about temperature from volcano. In this video we can see that the material that comes out of a volcano is burning hot and it is in liquid form. It is almost like a liquid fire. So from this video we can understand that the temperature inside the earth is quite high and therefore the rocks and other materials cannot remain in solid state. Therefore volcano is a natural activity that provides us information about the earth's interior. It provides us information about the components, temperature and viscosity of the earth's interior. So which of the following natural activity shows that the earth's interior is too hot? Is it earthquake, tsunami, volcano or forest fires? Well, we just studied that volcano is the natural activity that provides us information about the temperature of the earth's interior. So we just studied that volcano provides us information about the temperature of the earth's interior. But how much is the heat? See, the heat present in the earth's interior has been illustrated with the help of a graph in this figure. This graph shows that temperature rises with increase in depth. And there is a rise of 1 degree Celsius for every 32 meter of descent. That is, if you travel 32 meter deeper, then temperature increases by 1 degree Celsius. From this graph, we can see that as we go deeper into the earth, the temperature rises. In fact, the temperature of the core rises above 5000 degree Celsius and the earth's core is hotter than the sun's surface. Surprising, isn't it? So now do you understand why we cannot travel deeper into the earth? Because if we travel to the innermost part of the earth, we would burn into ashes. Apart from temperature, volcano also provides us information about the elements that are present inside the earth. Now, during a volcanic activity, these are the elements that comes out to the earth's surface and these are oxygen, silicon, potassium and aluminium. So, from this we can understand that these elements or minerals are present inside the earth in abundance. Now, each of these elements are not alike and they have different densities. So now let us see how the difference in the densities of these elements affect the earth's interior. Let us perform an activity. Drop a coin and a cork in a glass of water. What will happen? The coin will sink while the cork will float above. Why so? This is because the coin is denser than the water so it sinks while the cork is lighter than the water and it floats above. So from this activity we can understand that the elements of higher densities sinks or are found at the bottom while the elements of lower densities floats above or are found at the surface. So similarly, during the formation of the earth, the elements of higher densities settled at the bottom of the earth while the elements of lower densities were found at the surface. In this figure, we can see that the elements of higher densities like iron and nickel are found at a depth of 3500 km. That is, they are found deeper inside the earth while the elements of lower densities like silica, magnesium are found at a depth of 2840 km. Now along with silica and magnesium an element of even lower density like aluminium is found at a depth of 60 km. 
So from this figure we can understand that the elements of lower densities are found at the upper layers while the elements of higher density is found at the innermost part of the earth. So from this figure we can understand that if we go deeper into the earth density increases. So in the previous slide we learned that density of the earth's interior increases with increase in depth. Now this figure illustrates the densities of different layers of the earth. The density of crust is 2.7 to 3.3 gram per centimeter cube. The density of mantle is 3.3 to 5.7 gram per centimeter cube and the density of core is 9.9 .9 to 15 gram per centimeter cube. So you see that the crust has less density Mantle has comparatively higher density than crust but comparatively lower density than core while core is the densest layer of the earth. Now let us make a pile of book by putting the book one upon the other. Now let us try to pull a book from the above. Say this yellow colored book. It will be very easy to pull this book isn't it? Now if we pull a book from the middle, say this brown colored book, it will be a bit difficult and if we pull this book, that is the book placed at the bottom, it will be very difficult to pull this book, isn't it? Now why this happens? This happens because the book placed at the bottom experiences immense pressure from the books lying above it. It is very difficult to pull this book that is placed at the bottom because this book experiences pressure from so many books lying above it. So from this activity we can understand that as we go down pressure increases and the book placed at the bottom experiences maximum pressure. Similarly core that is placed below mantle and crust experiences immense pressure from the two layers lying above it. So if we go deeper into the earth pressure increases. So we learnt that apart from temperature and density pressure also increases inside the earth. I just mentioned that temperature pressure and density increases with increase in depth in the earth's interior. Now how does it influence the different layers of the earth? Temperature, pressure and density has an influence on the states of different layers. The crust which experiences least pressure and has lowest density is a solid layer of rocks. The mantle that is the middle layer of the earth experiences extreme temperature and therefore the rocks present in mantle cannot remain in solid state and we find molten rocks in mantle. The core is in solid form because it is the densest layer of the earth and it experiences extreme pressure from the two layers lying above it. So temperature, density and pressure provides us good information about the different layers of the earth. Apart from these three factors there is one more factor that helps us to understand about the earth's interior. In this video we can see different earthquakes of the world. See this video displays sudden trembling of the ground. The pedestrians are running here and there in a state of panic. Weak buildings are collapsing while the strong ones are moving to and fro. These vibrations are experienced during an earthquake. So what is an earthquake? An earthquake is a sudden and intense shaking of the earth's surface. It is a natural activity which causes immense destruction. Now apart from causing destruction, earthquake also provides us valuable information about the earth's interior. Earthquake generates waves of energy which are known as seismic waves. So what are seismic waves? Seismic waves are waves of energy that are produced during an earthquake. 
Now, the behavior of these seismic waves provides us valuable information about the Earth's interior. Now, whenever an earthquake occurs, it produces seismic waves. What are seismic waves? Seismic waves are waves of energy produced during an earthquake and the behavior of these seismic waves helps us to understand about the Earth's interior. Let's see how. See, this is the epicenter of an earthquake and the vibrations are mostly felt at the points that are near the epicenter of the earthquake while the vibrations are hardly felt at the points that are far away from the epicenter of the earthquake. Now why does this happen? This happens because the seismic waves do not travel uniformly throughout the earth's interior. Some seismic waves can travel through both solids and liquids while other seismic waves can only travel through solids. See, the Earth's core is solid. So, some seismic waves can travel through it. While some seismic waves, that is, this pink color waves, deviate from this point as here the density of the layer or the state of the layer changes from semi-solid to solid. So the behavior or the flow of the seismic waves depend on the density of the medium through which they flow and as the density of the layers changes the behavior of seismic waves also changes. So from the behavior of seismic waves, we can get some idea about the different layers of the earth. So apart from temperature, pressure and density, behavior of seismic waves is also a good indirect source that provides us valuable information about the earth's interior. So today we studied about the sources of information of the earth's interior and they are direct observation and indirect sources. The direct observations are oil drilling, mining and ocean drilling. Oil drilling and mining are economic activities while ocean drilling is done exclusively to study about the earth's interior. Now the depth of the deepest bore is 13 km which is too insignificant compared to the total radius of the earth which is 6400 km. So we have to rely on some indirect sources which are temperature of the earth's interior, density of the earth's interior, pressure of the earth's interior and behavior of seismic waves produced during an earthquake. In our next video, we will study about the different layers of the earth that is crust, mantle and core. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too. So register for free now.